Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on KTech and also streaming on YouTube.com. Uh, I'm your host, Frankie Slauson, and uh, we are in the midst of another great interview today uh, with another great uh, legendary singer. Today I have with me, if, you, if you're familiar with the songs Hot Rod Lincoln, or there's even a song that we played on the on the radio here a while back called Smoke, Smoke, Smoke That Cigarette. Well, I got the artist to those songs, none other than Commander Cody himself. How's it going, Cody? It's going very good. We uh, The rain stopped here on the East Coast, and it's slightly over 60 degrees for the first time in a while, so it looks like we might be getting some spring. Finally, yeah, it's the same things here in Rapid City. It's it uh, the weather doesn't know what it wants to do. It just uh, it's nice some days and, and crappy other days. Well, if you don't believe that the climate is radically changing, well, that's I think a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I definitely appreciate uh, having you on the show, and uh, this should be a, a very fun interview. I've always been a big fan of your music, always loved uh, the, the, the Hot Rod Lincoln song, as well as a lot of, you know, I'm the type of person that likes to play a lot of the deep tracks, so I mean, uh, it's not too often that I'll I'll play, a, I'll find a deep track of an artist and uh, and really make that song, try to make it a hit on our, our station if we can. <laughs> yeah, well, well they, the, the thing about the Lost Line Airmen is that was a really, uh, one of the best live uh, and recording bands of all time, and, you know, to make a few bucks, we did a couple of novelty tunes to get ourselves uh, noticed so that we could get out there and get some album sales and get the band out working, and that worked just fine, and we had a nice five-year run as Lost Line Airmen, and we did very well, and then, of course, some of the uh, uh, kind of things that happened to bands happened to us. Uh, for instance, our manager ripped us off for half a million bucks, and the band had to break up, and everybody went off on their own. I continued on my own with very varying degrees of success. Since that, I did some really crappy albums, I did some really good albums, but the stuff, the, the uh, four albums I made on uh, Paramount and LMMCA and the two albums, studio albums I made with Warner Brothers and the one live Warner Brothers album, seven albums with the Lost Planet Man, all really, really great albums and, and, and I think very important in the history of music. Oh, I, I definitely agree with you because, you know, to me, uh, you know, if, if you're a real fan of music and if you're a real fan of an artist, then most people will, will, will not just recognize you just for a couple of songs. They will listen to your entire album more than once. They'll listen to it over and over again if they really are a big fan and uh, really, uh, really uh, get to know your style of music. No, and having said, having said that, however, Hard Rod Lincoln has been selling for 45 years. So it, it was just voted uh, number five uh, a car show of all time by uh, NASCAR fans at Talladega last year. So I, you know, I'm not really seriously bitching about, about <laughs> the success of it. I mean, it's a, a, a very interesting song, but instead of leading to, uh, and after it was ahead, instead of leading to, uh, you know, uh, having the rest of the band, don't forget I wasn't the lead singer in the band. There's three real singers in the band. I was just the, you know, the leader of the band and I could talk real fast. And so <laughs> instead of, you know, leading with, you know, following up with the other guys the way we wanted to do, Paramount Records, of course, tried to duplicate the success of the first thing by doing more stuff by me and that uh, ultimately led to a lot of consternation on you know, inter-band relationships. Oh, sure, sure. But it's kind of neat, uh, as I'm looking at the Wikipedia page, it says, for those that don't know or aren't familiar with what you do, it says that your, your, your style is kind of a mix of country with rock and roll, western swing, rockabilly. Well, there's, there's a word for it, and that is eclectic. We did everything. Yeah, it seems like that, and that's that's kind of neat too because I like I like a good band that can that can mix it up and doesn't just do the same old uh, genre. Yeah, it's, it's, we, as I said, we do it all, and I, I've done some uh, work with the State Department where we go out and we represent uh, American music, uh, you know, to, uh, overseas. Matter of fact, we went to Honduras, of all places, last year to, to show American music to the, the people of Honduras, and it, it was uh, it's really received great. I can do, you know, I do country, I do blues, I do jazz, I do rock, we do heavy metal, we do uh, we do it all. And, and what what can you say kind of inspired you to kind of to get the musical note going in your uh, to make that your your career in the first place? Well, uh, it wasn't my career in the first place. I, I'm an artist. I got a master's degree in fine art, and I was playing, uh, yeah, played piano, of course, and I was playing in a frat band at University of Michigan, you know, to make some bucks on the, end, uh, on the weekends. 
And then uh, we started to you know, listen to all kinds of stuff. You know, we started listening to Bob Wills. We started listening to Jerry Lee Lewis, Seth Domino. And uh, everybody in the band started getting interested in different things. The bass player learned how to play steel guitar. Uh, you know, uh, got a fiddle player. And uh, we just uh, started playing all kinds of stuff and having a ball with it. And, that, and that's kind of what makes uh, the, the the whole story about your band uh, interesting because uh, uh, people probably don't probably probably a lot of people probably that, that uh, don't know much about your music uh, uh, would probably think to, that you're just uh, probably just known as a one hit wonder band. But uh, no, I, I I would definitely recognize uh, Commander Cody more for just uh, just a, a a good singer, just somebody who just loved loved the business and uh, wanted to entertain people. Yeah, and a good way for people to get in, uh, introduced to the rest of the stuff is through my YouTube channel, uh, Commander Cody Videos, in which I do the, uh, all the different songs that we recorded, and I don't bore people with live videos of the band. I, I do uh, live history of music videos and use uh, movie clips and stuff like that to illustrate the lyrics and the story of the songs to make them more entertaining, make it more fine art. Uh, and stuff like that. So that's a good way to to learn about what else we do if you're just familiar with the uh, hits. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Um, What would you say would be like uh, some of your your personal favorite songs that you enjoy playing when you're on the road or or doing a show? The songs are from from songs that I play myself on the road. I haven't really changed my set list. I mean, I've changed it slightly, but in in 20 years, we did them basic basic set list and our, our most fun song is too much fun of course and then our theme song is lost in the ozone and my favorite song that i wrote is down to season stems again blues okay okay yeah i think i was i was listening to that on youtube here the other day because i i saw i saw uh, your uh, performance i think it was from like 2009 or whatever it was uh of, of uh, you guys performing that song live in concert well, we do it every night, so I, I can't uh, you know, comment on that. <laughs> but do you think it's just kind of neat, though, that uh, that uh, music uh, really was a part of something that, other than being an artist, and we'll talk about that too, because I'm kind of interested in the fact that you're you're also an artist as well. Uh, but what what was it about uh, music that just kind of when you figured that this is what you wanted to do for part of a career anyway, uh, rather than just focusing on your art? Well, we were, uh, like I said, in 1967, when uh, we graduated from undergraduate, and I went back to the University of Michigan uh, in graduate school, and that's when we started, the, uh, became just, instead of just being a frat band playing Louie Louie, Wooly Bully, yeah. four times a night, we started expanding our stuff and, and doing that, well, the fraternities didn't want to hear that, so we had to start playing in coffee houses, and that was great, but then in 1968, we got a got out of graduate school uh, and we hit the street I took a job at Wisconsin State University teaching art and it was 20 degrees below zero meanwhile the lead, lead guitar player Bill Kirchin went out to San Francisco and was playing in little local clubs and stuff like that and about that same time Jerry Garcia was learning how to play steel guitar so Bill was on the phone and he said listen to this music that we were, that we loved that we were playing and people weren't digging it uh, they love it out here especially in Berkeley because of the blues folk scene, and if we came out here, if you came out here, we would do really well. So I said, well, let's go out for the summer, see what happens. We jumped in the van, went out to San Francisco, right there, June 6, 1969, and by August 18th, we were opening for the dead. Oh, awesome. Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty so cool. There's no going back yeah. to Wisconsin. And there's no going back to Oshkosh, Wisconsin, after the opening for the Grateful Dead in San Francisco. Did you ever want to, uh, I, I'm kind of surprised you never did anything for the Woodstock Festival. Well, that uh, was we out. were on our way to Woodstock when we found out that nobody was getting paid. We couldn't make it. We ran out of gas money. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, would have been, we would have been at Woodstock and we would have been in the movie and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, <clears throat> we, you know, we didn't have a record contract at that time. But do you do you think that if you would have played for on Woodstock that it probably would have helped you as far as getting your name out more? What, what are you, nuts? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, I, I'm definitely nuts. You know, I'm, yeah. I mean, come on, that made everybody's career. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, and, and that's kind of neat. Uh, what what uh, what big festivals uh, have you uh, have you performed at? We open for uh, Led Zeppelin at Nebworth. We do the Portland Blues Festival every other year, 175,000 people. Jeez, and that probably be the biggest biggest crowd you ever performed for. That was uh, well, no, the biggest crowd we ever performed for. We. Uh, uh, perform uh, the biggest 
festival ever held, which was the Fête de Humanité in Paris, France in 1973. And we were the headliners there. We didn't know exactly what it was. It turned out to be the International Communist Party Festival. And we were, uh, because we were in the, in the newspapers in Berkeley and doing all these benefits for anti-war stuff like that, they figured that we were the radical band from Berkeley. And they uh, booked us at this huge Jagundo uh, gig, which was the largest thing ever done. Oh, cool! Uh, and you know, you're talking about being an, an artist as well. Uh, what what uh, some of the some of the work that uh, that you've done, as far as that goes? I'm sorry. What what are what are some of the more notable work that you've done as an artist? Like not an, a singer artist, but like an artist artist. Uh, uh, well, if you look up uh, George Frain or Comedico di Art on the on the uh, web, you'll see it. I, I, I do portraits. I do uh, paintings. I do uh, metal sculpture. Of course, I don't do metal sculpture anymore. I'm an old geezer. I can't lift up <laughs> uh, bumpers, you know, to weld them together anymore and stuff like that. But uh, my master's degree is in metal sculpture with minor in painting and cinematography. All right. Well, hey, I, I do appreciate uh, you taking the time to let me interview you. Uh, this is uh, definitely a lot of fun. Do you have any, any last words to say to your fans uh, before we let you well, go? Well, just to check it out in depth. Check out the Command Cody videos. Uh, uh, listen up. There's tons and tons of stuff uh, on the Internet to, to download. Uh, look for the stuff where we collaborated with Tower of Power. There's especially a song Boogeyman Boogie, which is, uh, you can find the video of that easily. And just uh, type, uh, type in Commander Cody Music and Google and, and follow it around. I think, it's, I think everyone will have a good time. And I think what we're going to do, in, in, in honor of the fact that you were nice enough to let it, let me interview you, I think when I when I air this on my episode on my show, we're going to do a Cody, uh, a Commander Cody appreciation night. We're going to play a bunch of your hits as well as uh, some deep tracks as well. And uh, is, there, is there any certain songs you you would like us to play uh, in, in appreciation yeah, well, to? Say, yeah, play, play play the boogie woogie stuff. Play beat me, daddy, eat to the bar. Play rock that boogie. Play house of blue lights. And next time we're out, you know, I haven't done a big giant biker festival in quite some time. <laughs> uh, because, and we used to do that all the time. I'm a biker myself, uh, ex-biker. I, I haven't been on a bike in, in 20 years. I got really scared and almost killed myself. So my uh, wives have forbidden me to ever ride on the motorcycles ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but next time we're out in, in your general direction, I'll come on by. Yeah, yeah, because well, we got the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally every year here. Yep, exactly. I've done it a few times. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate uh, appreciate uh, the uh, the interview. My pleasure. Great talking to you, and all the luck in the world. All right, man. Take care. Bye. Bye, bye. And that was Commander Cody of uh, the Commander Cody and his Lost Planet Airmen. I want to definitely say a, uh, thank you to Cody for letting me do this interview with him. And uh, we will do a, a little George, uh, we'll do a little Commander Cody uh, tribute today uh, on this episode of either the Frankie Slauson Show or, well, we, we did kind of promise that we were going to do this uh, mostly on uh, 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 Reb Show, the Reb Rider Show. So we're, we're going to do we're gonna do a little tribute to Commander Cody on, on his show today. And uh, that's going to be kind of the theme if we haven't said it already. For you guys, so I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, enjoy this interview, Reb. Uh, uh, take it away, brother. <laughs> 